World of Quest is a Canadian animated series based on the graphic novel series of the same name by Jason T. Cruz. The series was produced by Cookie Jar Entertainment, in association with Teletoon Canada Inc. and Kids WB. It appears to be a parody of the fantasy genre that blends swords, sorcery and technology, in the vein of Masters of the Universe. It premiered on March 15, 2008 on Kids WB on The CW in the United States and in Canada on Teletoon on August 10, 2008 as a preview, with regular airings starting on September 1, 2008. The CW4 Kids dropped it from its schedule after airing the first season finale, Search for Power, on June 14, 2008. It was the last series to be produced for the Kids WB block. The remaining episodes can be seen on Netflix Instant Streaming. The show aired on Teletoon in Canada and Cartoon Network UK in the UK. It was also being shown on Disney XD in Poland and Latin America, and on Disney Channel in Russia and Hungary. In mid-September 2015, Disney XD Canada was airing reruns of the show. Since the rebranding of Disney XD Canada, from 2015-2016 it aired reruns on Family CHRGD. The show was nominated for Best Children's and Youth Program or Series by the Canadian Film and Television Production Association for their 2009 Indie Awards. Topic characters Quest a strong warrior with an odd past. Previously, he was assigned as a nurse for Baby Nestor. Quest first appears in Episode 1 when Prince Nestor arrives because his parents have been captured and he needs to find the Shatter Soul Sword so he can rescue them. Quest refuses until Nestor tricks him into activating an allegiance spell that binds him to the prince. His famous catchphrase is mostly, I hate, e.g. theme song, suckers, allegiance spell e.g. Nestor the prince of Odyssea, son of the king and queen of Odyssea, who have been captured. Even though he orders Quest around and calls him his bodyguard, Quest usually ends up interpreting his orders to suit his needs. Grayer a thieving griffin with an appetite, Grayer usually carries Anna Mott when traveling with the others. Originally he was Nestor's companion, and seems to be old friends with Quest. Gatling a robotic cyborg with a slight British accent, Gatling first appeared in episode 101.2, when Nestor, Quest and Grayer travel to the town of Effluvium seeking him. Quest disliked Gatling because Gatling suggested Quest be banished to the Queen in lieu of execution. Gatling can chew bits of metal and spit them out like bullets, which comes in handy during a fight. Way a shape-shifting female being with odd patterns on her body resembling circuits. Way always speaks in enigmatic riddles, although she is helpful. She has an intricate knowledge of the world of Odyssea, and often functions as the map since she can shape shift and guide to the company. She is found by Nestor in episode 2.1 when they find the Dagger of Wei. Wei often travels inside the dagger later on. Anna Mott a young sorceress, Anna has red hair and tattoos on her face and arms. She is a huge fan of Quest and adores the warrior, despite him not caring for her affections at all. Anna often boasts to be capable of casting a variety of spells, but they usually fail or have different results than intended. The one spell she can cast to great effect, though, is one that brings inanimate objects or plants to life. While these living tools often prove useful, they annoy Quest a great deal. The Guardian he's the one who protects the Shattersoul Sword. He got awakened when Nestor brought the tooth which held the five swords in it to the tower and got shocked by a green light. 
In another episode, he battles Egan and Egan gets saved by Nestor who loses the fire sword to the Guardian but realize they can easily, not really easily, get the earth and air sword from Spite but when they get there they find a sign that leads to the swords. Quest thinks it's a trap but they find the swords. When they go outside, they find the Guardian. Nestor tries to use the swords but finds out they're fake. In another episode Quest loses to the Guardian and loses Albert. If Quest loses, he loses Albert. If the Guardian loses, he loses the Shattersoul Sword. Quest refuses to lose so he tracks down the Guardian alone. He finds him and battles him and the winner is Quest by smashing the Guardian's precious snow globes which gave Quest a huge advantage and so he won. The Guardian refuses to lose so they run for the sword. The Shattersoul sword turns back to the five swords and Quest succeeds to get some swords but the Guardian got some too. After the mountain incident, the race for the sword started. Lord Spite the main villain of the show, Lord Cornelius Evil Spite Evil is my middle name, is an evil overlord who has plans of world domination, but always fails due to his bumbling underlings and his own incompetence and cowardice. He looks vaguely reptilian with green skin and a large horn on his head. Spite has a flair for dramatics, and spends more time on coming up with puns to use against Quest than on actual plans. Besides having a huge army of growls and grinders, and commanding the living fortress of Molox, he is a sorcerer of no small power and can also remove his right eye to use as a scrying ball. He plans to collect the five swords of power and use them to release Shadow Seed. He is also the one responsible for kidnapping Nestor's parents. Ogun Spite's loyal death knight, Ogun was a former rouster like Quest before turning evil. General Ogun turned evil because he felt unappreciated by the royal family, with the last straw being denied the title of Nestor's nanny, a position he wanted for a time. He wears armor resembling a skull and a skull mask-like head, helmet. The skull-like torso of the armor is actually alive. In one story a tooth was chipped and it was restored by the following segment. Ogun often eats things and creatures by sucking them into the black hole inside the mouth. No one has demonstrated knowledge of where it leads, though on occasion people have come back from it. Ogun is loyal to Spite and harbors a great hatred for Quest. The Catastrophe Brothers, Chaos, Calamity and Confusion Spite's three henchmen, Chaos, Minotaur, Calamity, Vulture, and Confusion, Lizard, are quite harmless on their own. But, when they come in contact with water, they can merge into a giant hybrid creature called Catastrophe and when their plug is pulled the ponytail in the back of his head, they turn back to the Catastrophe brothers. The three are quite useless, and usually rather try to shirk their duties and come up with explanations on why they could not capture the prince to Lord Spite, or which one of them should be to blame for their failures, rather than even try. Chaos is the oldest and most sensible of the brothers, Calamity is quite sarcastic, while Confusion is notorious for being an idiot, with a mouth that won't close. Deceit a witch working for Lord Spite, Deceit hovers above the ground and has a hat with a living snake on it on her head. Spite often summons her to help him in his plans to capture the swords, although Deceit, as she points out, it's in her name, has a tendency to double-cross him. Spite is always freaked out by her sudden appearances when she magically teleports in. Albert a giant green creature resembling a cross between an armadillo and an ankylosaur, wearing purple armor. He is used as a method of transportation by the team. Nestor and Quest usually travel in the mace at the end of Albert's tail, which functions as a sort of cockpit. Albert can roll into a ball to escape hairy situations, but this leaves his passengers quite dazed. He is the only thing Quest likes and calls him the most important member of the group. 
He is over 73 feet tall. Topic: <laughs> Creatures. Grinders, large, green, four-legged, rhino-like creatures with four eyes, one horn, and a huge mouth full of teeth, who can become alive if separated from their body. Growls, small, gray, goblin-like creatures that run on two legs and have fangs, a mohawk tuft of hair, colors may vary, and ear piercings. Sea squawkers, small critters with nasty biting beaks that live in Quest's moat as well as in small ponds throughout Odyssea. Stumps, sawed-off logs with arms and legs and glowing red eyes. They hurl balls of tree sap. Swampy crabby swamp creatures, large, green, crab-like creatures that live in the swamps that Quest and Nestor pass through. Grayer likes the taste of them, especially with butter. Loberman pinchers, green, dog-like creatures with purple shells on their backs and scorpion tails with a big, pinching claw at the end. Lucky, Quest's tiny, but extremely vicious dog. It is a pure-bred grinder spaniel, really just a ball of green fur with a giant toothy mouth and four stick-like legs. He was given as a gift by Quest for Lord Spite. Episode 107.1 Lipsuckers, large, slug-like creatures with giant kissing lips. Episode 107.2 Super Hoposaurus Rex, a cross between a Tyrannosaurus and a Kangaroo, bred by Spite to destroy Quest, but ends up treating Quest like a mother to a son. Episode 107.2 Tremordites, giant, terrible-smelling sand worms that protect Dust Devil Ravine. They're totally blind and use the hair on their bodies to see. Episode 108.2 Gatling's adopted mother, a cat kangaroo woman with cat ears and whiskers, and a woman's chest and arms. Croca doodle do a purple troll-like creature with a tuft of hair protruding forwards from its forehead, the group tracks down this creature to learn how to activate the Earth Sword. Episode 104.1 The toad jamimers of the fjord of foul funky fungus foul smelling feet creatures that inhabit the fjord. They also have serious problems with foot infections particularly athlete's foot. Dingbats large purple-colored bat-like creatures with long legs, big green eyes, and big fangs seen attacking a caravan holding Gatling's parents, but hideous, amazing clawed, and a giant green furry hand. Quest uses Prince Nestor as bait for the dingbats in order to save the caravan after being told to make a distraction. Suckers small, insect-like creatures who prove hard to hit. They are blood-sucking little flying scorpions, whose bodies are of a bluish color, whom Gatling defeats by spraying with a can of what seems to be sucker repellent. Wall of insults a mean, rock wall whom you can defeat by out-insulting. Gatling continuously insults the wall's family by calling them rubble, or something to that point. As it is insulting more and more, its face shrinks like how Grayer did when he was insulted several times by the talking wall and eventually the wall crumbles allowing the crew to pass through where the wall once stood. Acorn a certain, greedy acorn looking for riches, who rats out on Quest and the others by telling Lord Spite where they are and where they're going. It basically looks like a giant acorn, but the darker brown bit at the top with the stem takes the same shape of a beret, and the creature's teeth are jagged and popping out of its mouth in all sorts of places. The acorn is soon destroyed by Ogun after informing Spite of Quest's whereabouts. Siamese Uberilla a giant, two-headed gorilla, both heads having one eye, giving it a sort of cyclops-like appearance. A Siamese Uberilla is also the champion of the Grand Master, who Nestor and Quest, whose eyes wear swollen from the horse-like guards Dander, fought to obtain the fire sword in the Tournament of Punishment. 
Mountain a mountain who is very much alive after being woken up by Quest and Co. The grumpy old mountain seals up Quest, Nestor, Gatling, Anna, Way, Grayer, Spite, Ogun, Deceit, and the Guardian. They all split up and eventually end up escaping through the mountain's throat. Unfortunately, the mountain gives one last boom and scatters all the five swords all over Odyssea. Craggy tongue toe lickers furry, green winged creatures with large tongues and huge eyes. They also have small bird like feet. Though they aren't actually seen at any time licking anyone's toes, but at one point Grayer mentioned that his toes feel ticklish. Sprowl's small, horned, grey-coloured creatures that sound like and somewhat have the same appearance of Lord Spite. They're seen at the beginning of the episode, The War of the Griffins. They are said to be as heavy as bowling balls. They have a tuft of hair on the top of their head by the horn that looks like Lord Spite's, that can vary in colours of purple, green, yellow, red and blue. Spinders, Grintes a mixture of Lord Spite's looks, and cowardliness with a grinder. Created by deceit, these strange-looking creatures are green with a lighter shaded tuft of hair around their horn a horn just like Spite's and feet, plus a pony-like tail. They're created from grinders and one of Spite's nose hairs. Giant frog bat huge long-tongued monsters with webbed wings, clawed feet, and a mouth like Nintendo's Birdo. In multiple episodes, Nestor falls into frog bat guano, which is a purple color. They have small eyes protruding from its head, and use their tongues to attack. Shriek a frilled lizard-like sentient species. They are called shrieks because they are known to produce high-pitched shrieks. Their society considers themselves quite civilized, yet they quickly blame even minor inconveniences on witches, whom they toss down to a pit as a test for. Topic. Cast Ron Pardo, Quest, Grayer, Shadowseed, Chaos, Additional Voices Landon Norris, Nestor James Rankin, Lord Spite, Calamity, Additional Voices Kedar Brown, Gatling, General O'Gun, Confusion, Additional Voices Crystal Meadows, Anna Mott Melissa Altro, Way, Deceit Topic. Crew. Michelle Melanson, producer Rhea Westaway, producer Jane Crawford, producer Paul Brown, animator, director Jamie Whitney, director Steven Sestarzik, executive producer, writer Jason Cruz, creator, creative consultant, writer Shannon Eric Denton, associate producer, writer Steve Cooden, writer Mark Zaslav, writer Charlene Easton, writer David Silverman, writer Dean Steffen, writer Susan Hart, voice director Jesse Thompson, voice director Topic. Locations Odyssea, the fictional world or land where the story takes place. Magic and highly sophisticated technology coexist in Odyssea, making it similar to Eternia from He-Man. It also has more than two suns, which can be seen even at night. Odyssea, like Quest, derives its name from a type of journey, in this case an odyssey. Deludium, a town wrought with gambling that Quest says is filled with hoodlums. Episode 107.1 Dust Devil Ravine, inhabited by Termordites Episode 108.2 Forest of the Unforgiven, filled with mirror trees. 
episode 107.1 Lake of Little, a lake that shrinks anyone who falls into it episode 107.2 Crater of Mockery A volcanic cave with walls that read the minds of those who pass through it, and uses their thoughts to insult them repeatedly Episode 106.1 Cave of Oddly Big Creatures That Drool, the cave that has the crystal needed to activate the air sword. It is also home to a giant two-headed pancake-loving monster. Effluvium a town built upon a massive monster heat vision included. They have developed a society that is based on a number of crazy laws, so prisoners are in fresh supply to keep the monster from eating, destroying the town. The Swamp of Weirds, a swamp where weird things are located. The Swamp of Really Icky Things a swamp where there are really icky things Episode 112 1. The great 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 mountain so great that great doesn't serve it justice a large snowy mountain and the location of the energy sword. Topic. Episodes Topic. DVD release In March 2010 Cookie Jar Entertainment announced a deal with Mill Creek Entertainment to release their shows, including World of Quest on the home entertainment market in the U.S. On 27 July 2010, Mill Creek Entertainment released a 10-episode Best of Collection entitled The World of Quest. The Quest begins on DVD in Region 1. Topic. The Swords of Power Earth Sword A sword made of rock and surrounded by green mist. It is activated by sticking it into the ground. This sword can control the movement of rock and stone, and even make it levitate and disintegrate. Fire Sword A sword made of flames burning in an upwards direction. It is activated by placing it in the lava in the chamber of fire. This sword can control lava as well as fire, and it can become so hot that its hilt can even burn sometimes. Water Sword A sword made from water flowing towards the tip of the sword. It is activated by placing the aqua diamond inside its hilt. This unique sword has temperature adjustments, which allows it to create ice fields. Air Sword A sword made from a flat helix of air. Is activated by breaking wind on the sword. This sword can summon and control air and wind. It can even maneuver flight and create tornadoes. Energy Sword A sword resembling a bolt of lightning. It is activated by taming a thunder dragon. Has patterns on it like way. It is also known as the power sword. It can launch burst of energy and electricity. Shattersoul Sword A sword that will form when the five other swords are combined. It will allow the group to defeat Spite and rescue Nestor's parents. Spite wants to obtain it so that he can resurrect Shadowseed. It is possible that it can control all the elements of the five swords that initially form it. Topic. See also The World of Quest